Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. My name is Ray Marquina, aka The Official Arcaneer, and today we're diving into the topic of how to securely connect your Microsoft Fabric workspace to Azure Key Vault using a managed private endpoint. We'll cover everything you need to know to set up a seamless and secure connection step by step. So let's jump right into it. So I'm going to navigate over to the Key Vault that I provisioned for this demo called the Pro Demo KV. And if I navigate over to networking, I want us to take a look at some of the way, uh, some of the things that I've configured within this resource. So the radio button allow public access from specific virtual networks and IP addresses is selected. And what that means is you either need to be within the virtual network that is created, or you need to be whitelisted uh, within this firewall rule in order to access the key vaults. Uh, and in exceptions, I've also checked the box here, allow trusted Microsoft services to bypass this firewall rule. At the time of creating this, that does not include Fabric workspaces. So make sure that you understand what resources this is used for if you do want to enable it. And if I navigate over to secrets, you're going to see that I have a couple of test secrets here, uh, new, uh, new PW and REST API. And these are just for testing purposes. So if we take a look at the value of my uh, new PW secret, you can see that it just has a value of test. Now, what this means is if I'm not whitelisted, I'm not going to be able to access this. Or if I don't have the proper channel or security channel to access this key vault, I'm not going to be able to access this data. So let's navigate over to Power, uh, to Power BI, um, for Fabric, I should say, and let's create a new workspace. Let's call this test KV. And let me make sure that I am on my trial. And let's go ahead and provision this new workspace. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a notebook so that we can see what happens if we try to connect to this key vault without a managed private endpoint. So I have opened up a notebook called Notebook 1. Let's give it a meaningful name. Let's say uh, Notebook con to Connection to Key Vault. And we can use the uh, MS Sparks Util dot credentials dot get secret. And then we can pass in uh, a couple bits of information. It's going to take the URL and it's going to take the secret name. So to get the URL, I'm just going to go over to the uh, overview tab, or I'm sorry, I should say the URI, and I'm going to paste that in. And then I can paste in my secret name. So that's going to be new PW. And let's go ahead and run this and see what happens. Might just take a second for my cluster to start up. And I'll be, oh, and it looks like it just started up here. Should take just a minute for the uh, code to actually execute now. Okay, so we can see that the code has executed. And if we look down at the error, you're going to see that the client address is not authorized and caller is not a trusted service. Uh, and then it goes, uh, it goes ahead and gives the IP address that I would need to whitelist in order for this call to be successful. But because we are working within Fabric, I'm sure that this IP address is constantly changing. So that's probably not going to be a good solution. What we can do instead is we can navigate back to our workspace. And under the workspace settings, we have network, networking and security. And what we can do here is we can create a brand new managed private endpoint. And it's going to take a couple things. We're going to need to give it a, an endpoint name. So let's say KV managed private endpoint test. And it's going to need a resource identifier. And we can find this by navigating back to our Key Vault resource, going to the overview tab and taking a look at the JSON view. And up here is going to be your resource ID that it's requesting. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that and paste it on in. And then the sub resource should then recognize that this is Azure Key Vault. And if I want to give a request message, I absolutely could. So let me go ahead and create that managed private endpoint. So it's now provisioning here and making a connection to my resource 
which needs to be approved. So if I go back to networking here and I go to manage private, uh, man, private endpoint connections, you're going to see that I already have a few here. But if I refresh this page, you're going to see that there is one in a pending state. And if you look closely, you're going to see that it's going to carry with it the name of the of the connection that I created within Fabric. So this is how I know it's mine. So it says KV uh, Manage Private Endpoint Test. That's the one. And I can either choose to approve and reject or reject it. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and approve and say yes, because I do want to allow this to have access. And it just takes just a minute here. And if we go back over to our uh, Fabric workspace, let's click refresh and see what happens. Now you might need to do this a couple of times. I have seen where this fails the first time and passes the second time. So uh, I'm not sure what's happening in those circumstances, but just know that it might fail the first time if uh, you try this. All right, let me see where this has gone here. I think I saw that it is now approved. So we are approved here on the Azure side and we just got the notification here. Let's go back to Fabric and let's refresh. And here we can now see that this has been uh, successful. The activation has succeeded and the approval has been approved. We did approve that there on the Azure side. So now what we can do is we can navigate back over to our notebook and let's go ahead and rerun this code and see what happens. So now instead of the message that's saying we need to be whitelisted being there, we now get this redacted state. This is exactly what we're looking for because now what we can do is we can pass this into a variable and use it downstream in other processes so that we can pass in that credential for whatever application we need to use. And that's going to be it for today's video. I hope this guide helped you understand how to securely connect your Fabric workspace to Azure Key Vault using a managed private endpoint. If you did find this helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and share it with others who might benefit. And as always, if you have any questions or want to see more tutorials like this, drop it in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. Thank you for watching, and we're going to see you in the next one.